What you know, you can't explain. But you feel it. You felt it your entire life. There's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there. Like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. You take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Everybody, we are back. I know it has been uh, quite a, <laughs> quite a, quite a bit of time since I've made uh, videos. I've started making some more, more recently, uh, getting some uh, the replay mod up and running and everything. Pretty cool stuff. Um, but there's a lot to catch up on. So I think that this episode uh, is going to be mainly just kind of visiting the things that uh that have been built over the past uh, year or so year and a half i think it's been um and just kind of catching up on, on what we've missed out on and then talking a little bit about what the plans are for the future kind of where we're going with this what lies in store for us this new year so let's get into it man these new buildings that puffer has put up are just wonderful colors are like a perfect mirror of each other. I love how it's split down the middle. It's kind of fantastic. Wouldn't you agree, Bread Wither? Indubitably! Ah. I think Wet Sponge is a good building block. Anyway... Uh, nothing to see here. Everything's perfectly fine. Let's go on and do something else with the tour. All right, so here we are, kind of back where it all began. The city of Ilias. Um, initially, this was really just supposed to be a, you know, like a, a, a kind of a simple one-time build. I was going to build a, you know, a town or a city, and uh, that was kind of going to be it. Uh, we were, you know, I was going to build a city. We were going to play some Dungeons and Dragons in that city. And then the pandemic was going to be over in a couple of weeks, and uh, we'd all go back to our normal lives. Um, we've, you know, over the past three years, we've constructed uh, not just a city, but multiple cities at this point. You know, we're, we're getting, uh, the scope of this project is expanding at a rate that I couldn't have possibly imagined, which is really cool. And yet, there are still parts that aren't finished. Um, you know, we've still got lots of areas down here where you can see lots of outlines and just buildings that haven't been completed yet, so it's still a work in progress. Plenty more to look forward to as we get. But I thought we'd uh, take a little bit of time, explore a couple of the iconic builds here in the city, um, and then um, spend some time also kind of seeing some of the new stuff outside of the city, because there's a whole lot of that as well. So let's start with the elephant in the room, the soul tree. Um, obviously, to, to this day, this remains probably my, my greatest achievement in Minecraft. Um, I just, I, I love the, the shape of the tree and just the way it, it fits into the city and, and how uh, bright and vibrant it is. And I think it just it adds a lot um, in a way that I wasn't really expecting. You know, when I started building it, I was thinking, yeah, elves, elves live in trees, big tree, you know, church, temple. Yeah, cool, that sounds neat. Um, and it is, it is really turned into so much more than that. And I think that maybe this, the building, building the soul tree was kind of one of the things that indicated to me that, oh, oh, this, this project has potential to go places. Um, because there are so many people who, who also liked it. You know, it was, for the first time, it was one of the cool things that, uh, you know, that I was able to work on, uh, that, that, you know, random strangers on the internet were like, whoa, that's cool. And that was a, I don't know, it was a, a really special moment for me. Because uh, I've never really had anything that, you know, that I'd, I'd put in the, uh, out into the world that I'd gotten, you know, a, a response from such a large number of, of people I don't know in person. 
That was really cool. It's nice to be appreciated. Who would have guessed? All right, well, you can't really see it because of the silly clouds, but um, this is Vale. This is the castle. Um, and it's also something that I wanted to take a look at, something that you know, I'm pretty proud of. Um, one of my very first posts that I made on Reddit that got a lot of traction was taken from like somewhere down here. And it's before all of this existed, and it was just a shot upwards um, at the, the castle facade hanging off the front of the mountain. Uh, but that just about does it for Cloud Top. You know, I mean, this is the. That's the other kind of. One of the other big changes that we've made uh, to this project is that uh, this area has layers now. So there's more to it than just this area on top of the, on top of the mountain. You know, originally, this was the city. And this was what sat on top of the mountain and nothing more. Um, but we've kind of expanded that. So now we've got two other areas of the city. Uh, so Cloud Top is up there at the top. We also have Loam, which is down here at the base of the cliff, kind of sandwiched between uh, the, the cliff face and the ocean. Um, so all these little buildings down here. This is Loam. Also, beautiful in a different way. You know, there's definitely a, a stylistic difference between the, the graceful, soaring buildings up in Cloud Top. Uh, you know, lots of light colors and um, you know and, and things are very uh, pristine in a lot of ways whereas here down in Loam you can see that things are a little bit messier you know people build things to last not necessarily to look beautiful people work with what they have uh, and I think that that that, that change in, in the vibe is uh <laughs> it's noticeable it's something you can feel and then I want to take a look a little look at the the last part of the city. And this is something a little bit new, something we haven't done a whole lot. Um, but there's actually a whole city unto itself underneath the city of Ilias. So this is the port. Um, and I think that this is something that we've already seen a little bit of. I built this quite a while ago. I need to fix the, the terrain in here because I don't like how boxy and square it is. And I know a lot more about terrain than that things. Uh, but no, this is the stuff I want to see. This is Baster. Um, so Baster is um, the underground portion of the base. Um, but yeah, I thought this was um, uh, a lot of... Uh, I think Barton Richard did a lot of this, uh, the stuff we're seeing right now. Uh, and it's just... It's really cool, you know? That's... There's a portion of the city that I'd like to show you. Man, I, I get lost down here all the time. Because there are staircases that take you down to well, lower levels. There's multiple layers of Master. Master has, I think, five official levels of, of cave. Uh, and there are some, some little things that will take you down to the lower level. I don't know exactly where they are. They're Everything in here is wedged into little corners and alleyways, and it is very hard to, to navigate sometimes if you don't know already exactly where you're going. Okay, guys. It's actually only been 30 seconds since the last cut, and I have found a staircase that leads down. So hoping this will take us where I need to go. Yes! We are now in a lower section of Bastards. You can see that... It uh, as we get lower, the caves get less refined. You know, these are people who are living in a cave, whereas before it felt a little bit more like people who had like, maybe built a cave or dug out a cave. Um, but yeah, this stuff just continues. It continues downwards. Um, there are just miles and miles of uh, staircases and, and uh, back alleyways and dark, damp corners. It's just kind of magical. Okay, we're back in the the main streets of the of the town. Oh, I believe this arcane proposal surface trips. Yes, this I believe will take us all the way to the surface. It will be very convenient. Let's head on up. Whee! <laughs> Look at that. 
pops us out right here at the entrance to the city. Very convenient. But yeah, I think that just about does it for a tour of um, Ilias itself. Um, and now I thought it'd be fun to take a look at some of the some of the other towns. So let's go down here. This is the Rhyme Gate. It's the Eastern Gate. Right outside that Eastern Gate, Eighth City has sprung. This is the City of Stone's Rest. So this entire thing, um, this entire town, all of the little buildings, there are a few that have been built by other people, but I think the vast majority of them have been put together by one person, uh, and that's Lego. Lego is a madman. He's a wonderful builder, so good at the details and like the like the little the little detailing bits um, and flushing out interiors to make them feel alive. And, oh man, it is so cool. And he does statues too. Look at these statues. These are awesome. Uh, so he has put together this whole town, which I think is just it's I don't know, it's mind blowing because <laughs> yeah, this thing is. You know, this isn't just some little tiny podunk village, you know, and houses. This is a, a thriving city. Probably a hundred at least, right? A hundred of these buildings. He has put together each one of them. I'm pretty sure all of them have interiors. Um, and there's, yeah, it's just a cool setup and a nice town. And Stone's Rest is a, it's a mining, it's a mining outpost kind of. So this is the kind of town where... If you're someone who does mining, you go out and you mine all your valuable. And this is the town to cart them back into town, sell them to the appraiser, and then refuel, you know, restock, get more food, um, you know, stuff like that, more pickaxes maybe, <laughs> and head back out to do more mining. Um, so that's kind of the purpose, you know, historically. So I think over the years, Stone's Rest has probably become more of a metropolitan area. Just you know, another residential living space, kind of adjacent to Ilias. Um, but originally it was you know, more of a small uh, mining rest stop town. Alright, over here we've got a lone wizard tower. This is John's stationary tower. Sort of a, a play on uh, Hal's moving castle. Uh, but John has built this. Um, there's a, I believe, a meteor crash site up here. With the, whoever the wizard who lives here is investigating this. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> it's a it's a funky it's a funky wizard tower. Very appropriate. All right, coming through these gates, we can spot in the distance the coastal port city of Gothel. Gothel's a pirate town. It was once. A profitable trade port um, that has, over the years, kind of just been overrun with pirates. To the point where the, the kind of the mayor, the leader figure of the town, is a, the pirate lord, Ravish. And he lives way back here, up in this beautiful, diamond-roofed uh, castle structure right here. Gothel is cool. Uh, this is Richard has been doing, I think, most of the work here in Gothel. Um, although I think a lot of people have contributed buildings, I just don't know exactly which ones belong to who. And I don't want to. I don't want to offend anyone. But a few of the fun things about Gothel. A lot of these houses are built out of boats. You can see. Uh, we also have this tavern called Grog. It is literally a gigantic barrel, uh, which is just the greatest thing. Uh, more boat buildings. This one's got a boat as a roof. Bart and I built this little theater. This is the Scrimshaw Theater. Um, hard to tell at a glance, but this structure back here is supposed to be a whale skull. If you back up a little bit, you can kind of see the structure. Whales have really weird shaped skulls. Um, but yeah, Gothel's a pirate town. Uh, also home to, you know, sort of some of the 
classic D and D races that don't don't fit well into normal society, so goblins and orcs and whatnot. I think it's uh, it's interesting to you know to keep in mind that that while you know disliking someone on the basis of their appearance is is bad, I want to make that clear. It's bad to dislike people on the basis of their appearance or their race. Um, but in D and D, and in the real world, unfortunately, it's sort of a it's a thing that happens. And acknowledging it is is important because acknowledging that something exists, even if it's a bad thing, um, ultimately allows us to work on fixing the problem. Right? If we don't talk about it, then we can't fix it. That's always been my philosophy. Um, I'm not entirely sure what this is. Lego has been working on this. I think it's going to be a mental um, institution of some sort, or like a kind of a, an asylum. I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure. Over here is the city of Manoroth, another big city. Um, again, sort of a work in progress. You can see some building layouts that we're not quite finished with. Um, but this is definitely um, one of my favorite cities. Uh, this is where I really started spending a lot of time experimenting with block gradients. Uh, and so this little gate is one of the first things I built. Uh, I really like this transition from black terracotta nether bricks all the way up to quartz. Um, we go through the whole spectrum of dirt, granite, bricks, uh, into different kinds of woods, sandstone, bones. I mean, this, this palette has everything. And it, it somehow works pretty seamlessly. Um, I also like this roof tone. Um, this was one I had used before, but it's just it's a good palette. I spent a lot of time putting this castle together. Um, and it still needs some detail. You can see a lot of windows that don't have glass, things like that. If you're detecting a theme, I'm pretty much going to fly around and just say that all of these towns are wonderful and beautiful because they are. Um, so this is a little swamp town. This is the town of Saravin. Um, the terrain for this one is probably the most interesting thing. Um, we've got some, we've got a casino and some little huts and some bridges and stuff. Um, but these rocks were interesting to put together. Uh, they're sort of, they've got kind of a, a splotchiness to them. So parts of them have like really light blocks with like the diorite and the calcite, and other parts have darker blocks, you know, cyan, terracotta, and stuff. Um, and you end up with these kind of interesting interesting looking rocks. We've got some moss on top of them. I think they came out really well. And they kind of, some of them kind of support each other. You can see there's, there's little gaps you can see through. I mean, like, parts that overhang this. Kind of neat. This is the city of Muddle. This is a halfling community. Uh, so, think Hobbit holders. I right? think the Shire. Kind of like that. Um, this one is definitely a lot more bricks and ceramic based. Lots of pots, lots of bricks, lots of terracotta, lots of buildings built into the walls. Um, and I think all the little houses here have little natural roofs with grass on them, which is really cute. Yeah, look at all this. This is really nice. There's also an emphasis on chickens. I'm not entirely not entirely sure why, but uh, Bart has decided that this particular community is big on chicken. There's a number of these little, well, like, you know, even this little tower has chicken head and some wings. <laughs> I don't know. But it really, it really gives Muddle Home some character. So. This Following this road, this takes us back towards the west a little bit, and um, we'll see the town of Embersteel, which is another major city. Um, again, Richard has been going nuts with these uh, with these towns. Um, he builds so quickly, and but they, they come out so nice, you know. Can't argue with it. Yeah. 
This is Riven Yard. Kind of the last stop town before you get to the big mountain pass. Again, Richard has put together most of this, I believe. Although I think there are at least a handful of buildings in here that are Bart and possibly Lego. I'm not entirely sure. I know this cart was built by MCX. But we, we, we all collaborate on a lot of this stuff. Uh, this is Pinevale, just a little bit to the west of Ribbon Yard. This is a uh, kind of an elven retirement community. This is a uh, this is the the white picket fence in the burbs kind of thing. I like to think that this is where you know the the wealthy elves come to retire uh, off in the mountains. You know, nice pine trees. There's a winery back there. Um, it's just kind of a sleepy little yeah sleepy little little community. And off in the off in the hills, there's the winery run by I believe some some wine loving monks. <laughs> Super cute details. So this is Wildstone. Uh, this is the area we've been working on most recently. Probably all of this has been built since the beginning of December, roughly. Um, so it is currently, depending on when you're watching this video, I suppose that could be a long time. It is currently January 9th, uh, to date this video a little bit. So it's been a little bit over a month, a month and nine days. Uh, and we have come quite a, quite a ways. There's quite a lot to see here. Lots of little buildings. You can see uh, Richard's built this beautiful water temple. You can see some little halfling... Uh, Halfling Burrows. This is Lily Burrow over here. Little Halfling District. Um, we've got some stuff that's unfinished. The castle back there in the distance. We've got our dam, and we're not going to talk about that. Uh, we've got our our water wheel building. The Amber Emporium. Um, even since even since uh, even since the stream, <laughs> we we built this on stream about a week ago. And look at this! There's more buildings. These buildings were not here yesterday, I don't think. In fact, these banners were not here when I started this uh, this report. So, oh, there's Puffer. So yeah, he's actively adding to it. So <laughs> uh, you, you get to see things being built in real time. Like this. Yeah, this castle is absolutely gorgeous. And then my uh, my personal favorite part not biased at all this is the oh god what do we what do we decide on for a name i think i was calling it the galvamber tree because it is encased in a big blob of amber anyone who doesn't know what amber is it's essentially like fossilized not even fossilized it's just very old tree scene. Uh, if you've ever seen jurassic park uh they the dinosaur dna that they get to uh to resurrect the dinosaurs comes from uh, the, I believe, the, the stomach of a mosquito that is trapped in amber, and that's kind of it's kind of a, a common um, I don't know paleontologist meme or uh, trope maybe uh, just this idea that insects uh, and plants and stuff. We have really, really good, uh, really good um, specimens of ancient insects and plants and stuff, because a lot of them were small enough to get trapped in the sticky sap, which then hardened and became amber, and has managed to survive, you know, however many millions of years to get to today. So in the same way, this tree has been trapped in amber. I would say probably at the time this tree was probably trapped in amber on purpose by some druids in order to preserve it. Something like that, or something like that. I'm not really sure. Uh, this actually is hollow, although it, it's intended to look from the outside like it's solid. But you can go inside to get a better look at the tree. Kind of a popper tree with some ice, uh, ice and prismarine leaves. And just, no, kind of a nice tree though. A little bit different, um, but I feel like it needs to be different if it's going to be like an ancient, ancient prehistoric species.
All right, let's get this show on the road. Okay, so we've made it to the first stop on our big tour. Um, <laughs> it took quite a lot of traveling. Um, I don't know exactly how many blocks we travel, but it is quite, quite a lot. Um, but yeah, this is the town of Salemport. Bart has been hard at work here, making it into a thriving little community. Um, there's also a thriving salt sale business. They've got, so Salemport is built right on the the margin between these big salt flats is a gigantic section of, uh, of kind of saline pools that spread out this direction. And then the river, which is right over here. Um, and so the idea being that they, they mine up the salt, they put it in little carts, they put loaded onto barges, and then send the barges downstream to wherever it is that people need salt and smokes. I think it's a it's a cute little place. Look at this this little fishing hut. Live bait, fresh fish, bought and sold. Got some frogs. I like the frogs hidden down here in these. Um, we like to hang out down here in the in the, the bottom of these uh, cat hills. Oh yeah, there's one. And then so you watch, and every once in a while you'll just see a frog just emerge like a like a dolphin jumping out of the ocean. I don't know if frog friend is going to do. Oh, they're dang it, missed. Okay, I'm not gonna move from this spot until it jumps. Any second. I'm waiting, Mr. F oh, there it goes! <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, alright, let's uh, do another little time lapse and go find. destination. It's the town of Skystead. Yeah, this is our little country western frontier frontier town. I like it. And it's cool, you know, you can see that, you know, pretty much all the main roads have already been laid out, um, the ones we travel along. So it's really just going to be a matter of people finding these places that they think are beautiful and where it would make sense for them to, you know, to try and have some sort of, uh, some sort of settlement and just kind of build towns there, build, you know, build uh, other things of interest, you know, statues or temples or dungeons, who knows? 
All right, everyone. Well, that's about all I've got for you here today. Uh, it's been a jam-packed episode uh, looking at my recording time. This is easily going to be like a 20-plus minute uh, <laughs> video. So I hope that uh, anyone who's stuck around till the end, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, you know, maybe you learned something. Um, I know that I did talk a little bit at the beginning about just having a little bit of a discussion about sort of where the project's going and kind of what the next steps are. Fortunately, I don't really have uh, just like a lot of time for that right now, so uh, that's probably gonna have to wait for a different video. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll start working on putting that together and uh, yeah, we can have a bit of a discussion and get things figured out. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to be back and excited to uh, see where this year takes us from all of us here, including the Chungus Duck himself. You have a great day, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!